How's it going? This is going to be a quick one about a smart garage door opener that you can buy off the shelf. It's from my dad. My dad is a great guy, and I love him a lot. A few weeks ago, he was here at the house helping me with something, and I said, Dad, I've got all this smart stuff. What can I do to help you? And he said, I'd really like to know when my garage door is open or closed. I can do that. But my dad doesn't live in the same town as me, so I can't just go over to his house and install one of my systems for him. He's pretty smart, but I don't think he wants to learn how to use Home Assistant. So I needed an off-the-shelf system that he could install that would run an app that would let him see whether his garage door is open or closed and control it when he's not home. Turns out, that's not hard to find. I wanted to find a smart garage door opener module that wouldn't break the bank. So this is the one I got. It's actually made by Zemismart, although it doesn't say it here. You can get it from Amazon, but you can also order from Zemismart directly and save a few bucks. This module has everything I was looking for. It's got a sensor to know when the door's open or closed. It can control whether the door opens or closes. And it's got an app that you can put on Android or iOS and that you can access from anywhere. And it's really not very expensive. I could DIY one cheaper, but that's not the purpose today. So I've got it here sitting on my desk. Time to see what's in the box. Here it is. Inside, we've got some instructions. Got a lot of hardware, double-sided tape, some wire management parts. So that's nice. Here's the actual unit. A few more screws. This is the magnetic sensor. So it'll plug in anywhere you've got 120 volt power. Looks like a decently long cord here. Uh, I would guesstimate that's four feet or so of cord. These are the two wires that will connect to either the button for the garage door or directly to the garage door motor at the same context where the button on the wall connects. We'll talk more about exactly where those go. And then here we've got the sensor. This is a magnetic sensor. It's got two parts. This part you'll mount on the garage door with a little double-sided tape. You could put some screws in it if you want. And then this part that is wired to this module, uh, you'll have to mount somewhere next to the garage door where these will come in reasonably close contact. They don't have to touch, but you probably want to get them within a quarter of an inch or so of each other so that it'll sense. And you may have to play with that a little bit to make sure that they're sensing. But it gives you quite a length of this wire. So my estimate would be at least 10 feet, maybe even 12 or more feet. I'm gonna guess that in most cases, the best place to put this is gonna be up by the garage door motor. That way you can easily connect these to the motor itself and you'll have power up there. And then you'll have to run this along the ceiling or the channels maybe of the garage door track to get it somewhere close. Now it's powered up and get it connected to the app. I think on the box this says that it uses the Smart Life app, but underneath Smart Life and a dozen other different app names is a software that's made by Tuya. So you can use the Tuya app and that's what I would recommend. So grab the Tuya app, it's available for iPhone or Android, and we need to register for a new account. Okay, put your email in, and then it will give you a verification code. There it is, verification code. Oh, gosh, it's a little early to be asking me to review the app. Create a family. Now we're done with that. We've created a family. Let's view the family. Now we're ready to add a device. So I'm going to plug this in. Ooh, we got mucho blinking going on here. We're going to hit add device. Confirm indicator rapid blink. Then you have to put in the Wi-Fi name and password for your home network. Boom, done. Garage door, great, done. And now we can do some fun things. First thing I want to do is I want to test out this sensor. So right now it says it's open because the sensor is separated. When I put them together, says it's closing. That is excellent. And when they take it away, it says it's opening. Excellent. If you click for this to open, but it detects that the sensor is not open, it will close it again. So if I click for it to open, then I have to move the sensor away. Now it'll completely open. 
it'll allow it to completely open. And then the same thing when it goes to close, it's got to actually have the sensor close together. And there's two lights. There's the red and the blue. Oh, and the red and the blue change based on the state as well. Very nice. Uh, if you have an Amazon Echo or Google Assistant, you can also use it with those devices. If you click one of those, it will tell you how to do it. You'll have to go to the store for whichever device, Amazon Echo or Google Home, and download the app and make a connection. So the button that activates this is the one in the lower left corner that says switch. And if the sensor doesn't sense that it's correctly moving, it'll send it back in the other direction. Also, you can set a timer to tell it to close in three minutes. And after three minutes, it will automatically close. This will keep track of when it opened and closed. So if there was an event, you weren't home, something happened, you would be able to go back and track when the door was opened and closed. And you can do it on a schedule so that at 10 o'clock every night, every day of the week or certain days of the week, you can set it to switch it on or off. So we need to make sure we know which is which. Is on open or is on closed? Not sure I know. Out here you can use the button. Okay, off seems to be closed. Closed, off. On, open, closed, off. That'll be important if you set one of these timers. So what you would want this to be is off. So every day at 10.30 p.m. it will turn off the garage door which is closed. We set that timer, the timer just went off and it will then close it beautifully. Well, it didn't close it all the way because I didn't have the sensor there. <laughs> but it functioned correctly on the countdown. Very nice. Okay, well that's functional. It has all the basic functions that I think my dad will use or need. So I'm happy. The instructions here are actually pretty decent. Walks you through the instructions for the app. Gives you some instructions on installation where they suggest you put the sensors. This is saying they want the sensor at the top of the garage door in the middle. That's important that you do that correctly because of the way the app works. If you were to put that sensor someplace else, it might not function like you want. It'll open and close part way and such because it won't be sensing the correct state of the garage door being open or closed. So that's the mounting point that you want to use. You want it right there at the top middle of the garage door. And they give you all the hardware to make that happen. And then instructions as well on connecting it to an Amazon Echo or Google Home. It also gives you a simplified diagram of how to connect it to your garage door motor. Your garage door motor will have a pair of contactors that are going to the switch on the wall. That's where you need to connect these red and black wires. So for the wiring connections to the garage door motor, when you get up and look at it, it will probably look something like this. Most likely the two connections on the left, the red and the white, are the ones that are going to go to the button on your wall. The way to test is to take a wire and stick it in each of those connection points and see if that opens or closes the garage door. If it does, then you've found the place where you need to connect the black and red wire from the smart garage door module so that it can control the motor. Just add the wires from the smart module to those same two contact points. Got it? Good. The Amazon listing has a list of compatible garage door models. And more important than that, it has a list of the models that are not compatible. So if you see your garage door model on this list over here, the right hand column, then this device most likely will not work for you. It might still, but they haven't checked it and they're not going to guarantee that it will. One more thing that I just found in the app. If you're looking at this page of the garage door opener, you can hit the button in the upper right corner. And if you scroll down, you can see add to home screen. There's add to home screen. And now you can have a button right there that will open and close the garage door. Dad, I know you use Android, so hopefully there's something similar to that for your phone. Well, that's it. I think that's all the information I can give you. I wish I could be there to install it for you. The last thing I'm going to do is factory reset this module. According to the instructions, you just hold this button for a bit, 5 or 10 seconds. And if we unplug it, plug it back in, we should get the rapid flashing that indicates it hasn't been connected to anything. And if we look at the app, the device has disappeared from my app. Now it's ready to give to dad so he can put it in his garage. Well, there you go. Zemi Smart garage door opener. So far as I can tell, it does what I need it to do. Smart home devices are becoming more and more common. And they're not just for people who want to spend a bunch of time programming and soldering. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, 
Adios. Love you, Dad. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.